In this next movie, we're going to be working with patterns and gradients. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create the actual front and back covers and the inside page templates for our menu design. So let's go to the file menu first and choose new. And inside of the new document dialog box, I'm going to make sure that I have four artboards up here at the top. So increase the number of artboards to four because you want a front and back cover, an inside left, and an inside right page. You also want to make sure you're choosing letter as your size. I'm going to switch my units to inches because that's what I'm most comfortable with. I also want you to make sure that you have a bleed. Your bleed probably looks at zero initially. Go ahead and click one time on the up arrow right here. That'll increase it to about an eighth of an inch. The bleed area is the area that falls outside the printed area of the page. We do this to ensure that when objects are trimmed down after they've been printed, that there's no gaps, that we have a full coverage of ink all the way to the outside. So it's basically just extending the border of your object that you're drawing or you're working with a little bit more to make sure that you have an edge to edge print. Once I hit OK, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So here are my documents. Let's go ahead and reset everything so you can see it. And once I get that reset, I'll grab my zoom tool and let's zoom in right here. See this little red line? That's the bleed line that extends out from every single one of these pages. That is going to enable me to create artwork that meets that line. And then when it's trimmed down to this final size right here, I don't run the risk of there being any white paper showing through. So that's why we use bleed. All right, press command and control zero to zoom out. And now what I want to do is create a rectangle to go in the background here. I want it to have a solid color, no stroke. So we'll just go ahead and do this, and we want to meet those bleed lines. Smart guides should automatically snap you into that. Now I want to fill this with a gradient, so let's do that by opening up the gradient panel and just clicking right here. That's going to start the gradient swatch. But in this case, it gives me a gradient that's linear from left to right. I want something that goes from the center all the way out. In order to do that, you have to change the type from linear to radial. There we go. Now I also want to change the colors. And I can do that from my swatches panel, but unfortunately I don't have my swatches in there. If you created a library earlier with your color themes inside of it, you can simply right click on that color theme and choose add to swatches. Or if you have the ASE file in your exercise files, you can load that up as I showed you how to do earlier in this course. Let's go ahead and open the swatches panel now, bring that out, open the gradient panel, bring that out and we'll dock it just to the bottom like so. There we go. Now, all I have to do with this object selected is drag the dark color to the dark, the light color to the light. And there is my gradient background. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're only going to do one page at a time, and I'll show you why in just a minute. Now, let's go ahead and reset my workspace to give me the maximum amount of screen real estate here. And let's open up another file. File open. And we're going to go in and we're going to look for the ornate pattern.ai. This is an already vectorized version of that pattern that we had earlier. Go ahead and copy that to your clipboard and then close that document. Then we will paste this right there in the center with Commander Control V on our keyboard. Now we want to also make this a little bit transparent because obviously that's a little too dark. So let's change this to something like 40% and see what it looks like. There we go, just kind of a subtle change right there. You can even increase the opacity a little bit if you want. And if you want that to really be darker, click on these two little circles right here, change the blend mode to multiply. That way it looks a little bit more natural. There we go. And so let's tone this down just a little bit more. 30% looks okay. All right. Now we've got that taken care of. Now we're ready to turn this into a pattern that we can reuse. So let's go to object, pattern, make. So Illustrator is going to come up automatically and tell me, hey, I've created a new pattern for you. It's in the swatches panel. And you can see it right there. It's in the swatches panel already. I'm going to hit don't show again because I don't want this coming up every single time I create a pattern. I'll hit OK. And so here's my pattern. I can select the tile and I can make changes to it. So for instance, I can shrink this down a little bit. And then I can choose size tile to artwork and that will automatically make everything shrink down a bit. I can choose brick by row, brick by column, hex by column, hex by row. And again, you get the idea. This is changing it ever so slightly each and every time. I'm going to choose this one right here, brick by column. I think that's pretty nice. And so the brick offset, one half, everything looks good. Let's change the copies here to something a little bit larger, like nine by nine. And I think we're good. So once we're finished with this, we hit done.
That's going to create the pattern swatch, but you're not going to see the pattern swatch out on your artboard. In fact, you have the original size and shape right here. Well, I don't need that anymore. I can just delete it. So select it, press delete. Now with this rectangle, I'm just going to select it and we're going to open up a panel we haven't talked about a lot called the appearance panel. The appearance panel is basically your eyes into the appearance of whatever object you have selected. So for instance, right now it's showing me that it has a fill with that gradient swatch in it. It's also using the default transparency. I can open up that transparency dialog box and I can change the opacity of the layer, the opacity of the fill, etc. Now I want to add this pattern to this. In order to do that, I have to add a new fill on top of it. So I'll select the existing fill right here and then come down here inside of this panel and right here is the add new fill button. When I click that, it's going to add a new fill directly on top of the old one. I can click down here and change it to find this new pattern swatch that I just made. Once I click that pattern swatch, it applies itself automatically. Now that gives me a self-contained pattern and gradient on the same layer. I don't have to have two or three objects to make this. It's all done through one object using the appearance panel. Okay, now let's reset the essentials workspace, get everything back where it should be, and let's focus on getting this thing on all of these artboards. The easiest way to do that is to go to the edit menu and choose cut, and then finally go to edit, paste on all artboards. Once it does that, it pastes in place on all the artboards instantly. We have the repeating pattern. Everything is good to go. The last piece of this puzzle is to add a little bit of white space to these two. These are the inside left and right panels. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to draw out a rectangle. And this time I'm going to go over here and we'll just kind of meet something like that. Now it's going to have the default pattern on there. Let's switch that back to white. There we go. And I want to make sure it's in the center of that artboard, so I'll just center it up. I go all the way to the middle because this is where these are going to meet inside of the other document. You can also just center this up if you wanted, if you wanted a border on each side. Totally up to you. Let's round the corners a bit just to give it a little bit more of a casual feel. And then we'll just duplicate this by Option or Alt dragging over. And there we go. You can also center this up by using the controls at the top. So there we go, there's our front and back covers, also the inside left and inside right pages. We are ready now to start assembling and putting artwork onto these so that we can actually put our final menu project together. This is getting really exciting and we're getting really close to being done. I hope you're just as excited as I am.